get settled. We'll we'll get started in just um, a minute. We're just all on screen webinars. We're doing a fucking webinar. Yeah. All right. Um, welcome everybody to PNP Live. I am Beth Wong. I'm an event coordinator at Politics and Prose. Um, and thank you so much for joining us here tonight to celebrate the release of Homestyle Cookery, a new cookbook from chef, internet hero, and today father of three, Maddie Matheson. Um, at any time during the event tonight, you can click on the link that I'm going to post in the chat to purchase copies of tonight's book on PNP's website. Your purchases come to the store at a very difficult time for small businesses across the country. And in addition to growing your own cookbook library, a book sale from Politics and Prose tonight means that we at the store are able to keep bringing you content like this. Um, and we're so proud of it. And it's all we want to do. Uh, you can ask our author and moderator a question tonight by submitting it to the Q&A box, um, which is found at the bottom of your screen. Uh, be sure to submit your questions there and not into the chat so that our author will see it. Um, waste no more time getting to the main event. Uh, Maddie Matheson in Homestyle Cookery returns with 135 of his absolute favorite recipes to cook at home for his family and friends so you can cook them for the people you love too. Um, if Maddie's first book shared his culinary story, Homestyle Cookery will help you build yours and there is no better time to do that. Um, Maddie is joined in conversation tonight by James Beard award-winning writer and pastry chef Lisa Donovan, who has redefined what it means to be a Southern baker as a pastry chef to some of the South's most influential chefs, including Margo McCormick, Tandy Wilson, and Sean Brock. She's a regular contributor to Food & Wine magazine and the author of Our Lady of Perpetual Hunger, which you can also get from Politics and Prose. Welcome, both of you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. So happy to be here. Maddie, thanks for... Um asking me to do this you're very welcome and and well more so thank you for doing it well, i know time is precious it is but also somehow uh very expansive in these days <laughs> we got time we got a little bit of time you know i mean i'm basically my ass is part of this chair now because this is where i'm at all of the time <laughs> everyone's just zooming instead of zooming about nothing with their jobs they get to watch us zoom about a book and uh -huh. life. Yeah. So how's it been going this week? I know we talked about it a little bit before, but like, how's your week been launching this book? Well, you know, great question, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> it's, been, it, it, it's been amazing uh, to say the least. It, uh, you know, like anything, um, anybody that's written a book, anybody that's uh, built a project, anybody that built a tree for it as a kid, uh, you know, when you hammer that last nail into the step on the tree and you can climb up and you get that new view of the world, it's a, it's a beautiful one most of the time. Uh, and, and just kind of getting this book out is, is something that is, you know, I get, I think um, I'm always over my books. The, even like my first one, which was like, you know, my like real kind of life story through uh, the culinary lens, but it's still like, people don't really realize how much back and forth it is to make a fucking book. Yeah. And, and, um, <laughs> and it's just like a very painstaking, like uh, copy editors and editors and, and, and layout people and design. And You're it's very, um, it's, yeah. 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 And, and, and it's just like one of those things where you just want, it is like, uh, you know, it's like the birth. It is, it, it, it's, it is a thing where you create this thing. You love this thing. You nurture this thing. And then it's out into the world and you're like, good luck. Good luck out there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, and it's definitely strange times, but you just opened a whole segue into uh, birth and you just had a baby today you guys just had a baby today maddie we did i'm a, i'm a i'm a, fa a beautiful father of beautiful three beautiful beautiful babies yeah. and uh yeah. i know it's nice isn't it it's nice it's nice it's I nice mean, it's shout out to all the mothers out there all the women <laughs> out there you y'all are strong well, beautiful <laughs> tender <laughs> just beacons beacons of light and joy well, I agree. I agree with all of that. Everyone's happy and healthy in the Matheson home today, yeah? Yeah, everyone, like, uh, you know, the third um, very successful home birth with us. 
Um, second baby born on the farm, which is uh, an incredible thing. Uh, Mac, Mac, we did a home birth with Mac in the city. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's a, um, even in my book, I, I think I dedicate it uh, there's, there, to the family and then I'm like, and to the baby too, but we didn't have a name yet. So it was just like, I, I didn't even want to like name, I feel like naming a baby is kind of jinxy, but. Um, this is my only yeah. mom question I'll ask. Do you guys find out the sex of your baby or no? We do because we do. And because I'm just like, I can't handle that. I'm <laughs> like, I got so, my entire life is up in the air. My entire business <laughs> like it's just like I, every day I'm just like what am I winning what am I losing and I just like I just need some thing like if I can control a situation I want to control yeah. the situation uh, maybe if I were having children now I would agree but I was so young and dumb and and ready to be shocked by something besides my own bad decision making that I really just made <laughs> it's just super happy to be surprised each time and that's when yeah. we really truly decide the name of the kid in the middle yeah, we had a, uh, yeah, it's like one of those things I, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. And I, and it's like, a, 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 it's like, I, I, it's funny because when I, we found out that uh, Ozzy was a girl and uh, cause I'm like, I don't want Rizzo to be in between two boys. Cause Mac is just like this giant, he's a brute. He's like, he's four <laughs> years old. He's four years old and he's like the size of my leg. Like he's just a big dude. And, um, and he's a brute. He's so sweet though. And like, even, even like this morning, it's so amazing. Like, so like, I'll just be gushy for one second, but it's just like, like we fall asleep at five, like kind of like when the midwife, she left uh -huh. everything, the house kind of settles. Uh, -huh. uh, you know, Ozzy was born at, at like two sixteen. Everything's cool. Everything's copacetic. Everyone's blood pressures are cool. Everyone's peed. Um, you know, um, and, and uh, we fall asleep around 5 a.m. And I literally, like those moments, I'm like in bed, the sun's coming through the window. And I just wake up to like my son just talking about how beautiful, uh, he's like, she's so beautiful. And you're like, watch it. Like you wake up and like, you see your son, like just being like, he's so, she's, she's so beautiful. Um, and I just like, that's like the memory from this morning kind of thing. So it's just like, it's, uh, it's beautiful. I don't know. Like, it's just like those things that you're just like, I don't give a fuck. Cliches are real for a reason. And, yeah, uh, and kids will make you, uh, really softy spaces in the best way. Cause it, it wakes something up inside of you that maybe you were like trying to kill with cynicism for so long. And then yeah. like, oh, but this is actually really nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is nice. It's nice to kind of be vulnerable. Right. And it's just like nice to, uh, it's so nice to just kind of like be like in it and just be like, because I'm a person who would make fun of stuff, you know, like I'm the guy who's like, ah, yeah, That's come on. Cool, right? Until we're not. And then we're like, oh, actually, yeah. just, like soak in this niceness. And it, I actually do have questions, even though I could just talk to you like this for a whole hour. Um, since we're talking about kids and family. Well, we got questions. We got good questions. We have, real, we have real questions. We're professionals. We're authors. Um. I wonder. We're authors. <laughs> as uh, as I was reading your book, so so much of my career was sort of like compartmentalizing, being a chef, you know, working in restaurants, and also being a parent because I sort of had that trajectory all at the same time. And when I was reading this book, and I'll just admit, and I know you don't give two shits, but like I haven't read your first book. But um, what struck me about this book, yeah. and I guess I want to touch on, a, this is like a five part question. The thing that I really loved about this book was how much of mm. like the home was in this space and like your kids were in this space, your farm was in this space and, and you were writing clearly from a place of like being a man with a family and a farm and a life that you've like cultivated. And that really resonated in this book, which is such a nice place back to going, like going back to sort of like losing our cynicism. It's just such a nice place to like open a book up to and be like, oh man, Maddie's happy. And I feel it in your book. So I, like, I don't want to ask you too many trite questions, but I do wonder my own, like my own person wonders, like, cause I know that 
you know, whenever I'm in a restaurant kitchen, I'm one person. When I'm on TV, I'm one person. Like I have to gear my cooking and my speed and my technique to a certain audience at any given moment. Like what is the traditions of like your actual kitchen? And like, what are, well, like how, how are you like working that space with kids and with the family and now a new baby? Like when you go in in the morning or in the night or whatever meal you're about to make, like what is that space like? And what are the traditions that are coming out of that that you can already recognize? Great question, Lisa. Um, I think it's a um, couple traditions. Um, well, the thing is, is like, obviously, uh, the way I am on camera is very different than the way I am at home. Obviously, mm -hmm. I definitely play a character. That's mm -hmm. for sure. It is a part of who I am. But it's, it's like I, I embellish to the fullest extent. Um, and I love I exude the chaos. Mm -hmm. um, and in the restaurants, um, you know, I am, you know, I'm, I'm chef mode. I want things a certain way. I want, uh, you know, cleanliness and organization and, and, and time efficiencies and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And then, and then at home, I'm just trying to be normal. I, I really don't want, you know, and this isn't even a diss to, but like watching, like, um, I always, I, I always think it's so funny, like watching Sean with his like taste, his like his, his home kitchen setup more intense than like any restaurant I've ever even worked in. Agreed. Agreed. Like <laughs> and I, and I think that's amazing. I, I like, I, I'm like, I wish I could do that. Um, uh, but like, but at home, I'm like, I still got, I got like a jar of cinnamon that's half empty and it's like yeah. my grandmother's like, uh, you know, spices and, and it's just like, and I like that normalcy of home. I want, I don't want that, 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 um, pressure of, yeah. of, of, of what, where I'm, what I'm like in, in, in real restaurants and kitchens versus at home. I want there to be like, where is that pan? Where, yeah. where is that spice? What, how, how, like we just cook, like, I'm just like, we're just cooking at home. You know, like, I'm not, I'm not really trying to like, I'm definitely trying not to rewrite anything. I'm trying to like really make, like if I could eat like roasted chicken and mashed potatoes every day with like yeah. a pan gravy yeah i'm like that's like le legitimately that's where i'm i'm happy if i can eat like trisha is my favorite cook like i'm so happy that mm -hmm. obviously being together for like 22 years helps but it's just like the way that the way that trisha cooks like literally every day either she's making fresh biscuits french toast or pancakes from scratch pretty much every day I don't think she knows yet that she's my new best friend and we're gonna it's gonna happen <laughs> she she i think you guys would get along real good and and it's just like and then i'm like i'm like the eggs guy i'm the bacon guy okay. um and and she does a lot of savory as well at home obviously um but i think the traditions is like you know like and i'm even working on this is like no phone at the table yeah. you know and so then if I'm on my phone working, as I always say, yeah. um, because I'm as addicted to it as anybody, um, that, that like, we can't say no, like why Mac wants to watch his iPad, you know, he wants to watch another episode of Goosebumps during yeah. dinner. Yeah. So we're really trying to have those special times um, and, and just have literally 30 minutes. Like that's all we're asking for like kind of 30 minutes on each meal at the table. Okay. So that's an hour a day. We do 30, like, you know, maybe 20 minutes in the morning, you yeah. know, to be honest, mm -hmm. but we try to sit down, have a cup of coffee, yeah. glass of juice, fresh biscuits and jam and some bacon. Hey. Um, and, and it, it, it's just, um, you know, I think just being present is the, the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, are you fine to have more like obviously we all have more time for that right now but i and i'm jumping ahead because i i think it's a good time to ask this be, like for me like i'm deciding things in real time with all of this new available time like i think you and i and other chefs who run around the world and do this kind of career and are you know, balancing home lives and careers that we care about and also help 
support our families, frankly. <laughs> like we, yeah. you know, I think uh, for me anyway, I'm realizing so much in real time about the things that I refuse to let go of when this is all mm -hmm. over. And I think those moments are going to be things that I, like I'm gonna have a really hard time not being home for dinner until my daughter moves out, you know, like that's going to be a thing. I, and I mean, I've only got two more years, but you know, I think yeah. like, is, do you think that this time, this wasn't a question I intended to ask, but I, I want to ask it now. Like, do yeah. you think that like these last six months, like, is this going to change the way you do your career when things get better or, you know, go back to normal? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Because the thing is, is, um, I was, you know, this isn't going to sound like great, but I, I've never in the last five years, I've never been home longer than eight days Yeah. Mm -hmm. in a row, yeah. period. That's a fact. That's not, and that's not cool. Mm -hmm. And that's not anything, but right now we're putting in the time and me and Trisha have like a very, um, very active communication about what I'm trying to do uh, for the greater good of, of, of the, of the crew you know, of our, of our family. And, um, I'm trying to set ourselves up so we, I can farm full time in five fucking years, to be honest. <laughs> so it's just like, um, like I have like, but, but at the same time, it's, um, you know, I, I we all had to learn how to be, even be around each other that much. Yeah. And, and yeah. like, and, and actually just be like in conversation with your partner that mm -hmm. I've been together with Trisha for, for 22 years, I'm 38, you know? And, and it's just like, um, we had to really figure out how, how to like be together yeah. and, and co-parent. Like when I come yeah. home for, for when I come home, it's just like, Trisha just allows me to kind of play dad, you know? <laughs> and, and, and then, and then, and she had to learn how to like, let me in. And, and have a real voice and have a real kind of presence in, in my own identity as a father. I had to come to grips with and, and kind of like learn. And, and, and um, you know, it, it's, it's been very difficult, but a, a beautiful, like a, a, a beautiful thing because it's just been amazing, obviously. But it's like, it's not, it's like doing dishes every day on top of trying to rebuild your entire career during a pandemic blows your brains out. If you're a chef, yeah. I, I'm like, you know, to be honest, I'm sure no one's really saying that out loud, but it's just like, I'm everyone really always, act, everyone act like I'll cook all day. But if I have to do the 30 minute dishes <laughs> after three yeah. times a day, I'm just like, yo, this is not. And I'm like, yeah. I travel the world and I'm eating at the best restaurants in the world nonstop. Yeah. My, I'm like, I'm very grateful to have some, some of the best chefs in the world as my close friends. Yeah. And so I'm just like, we can, it's like, and now I'm home and I'm just like, and we're making three meals a day. And my kids only eat certain food. So I'm making me and Trisha meal and yeah, Separate. or she's making us a meal and the kid meal. Is, you know, kids are, and it's just like, my, Mac is just like, ah, it's green. I can't do that. That's green, dad. And you're just like, okay, okay, sorry. I'll make, I'll get some um, mac and cheese, mac and cheese again. Okay, okay. Brown you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me get something beige and unremarkable. Let me just like whip you up yeah. something. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think like um, being home, it's crazy because it's just like now I'm going to be, I'm, I, I had to be like uh, a sociopath. I, I had to, I, I had to have a brain set to yeah. to to not think about my children at a lot of times or my right. partner um, because I was gone so much working away from them. So it's just like I have to have that like thing where it's just like I don't think about it uh, yeah. because I'm not gonna. And then I get on a plane and I'm crying watching Tag and I don't understand why. And, right. and and then I'm just like. It's just like, it's like one of those like wild things. And it, 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 it's, it's like, once it's again, like all of our compartmentalization that we have to do in our careers to make everything work as humans, chefs, parents, eventually, like all got put in a washing machine and like tumbled together. And I have been doing the same math equation of like, 
uh, you know, just being as present as I possibly can and also trying to sort of tame the part of my brain that I had trained for so long to be away to yeah. you know, work 12 hour shifts and to do all of the things. And so uh, yeah. um, you mentioned your farm and I want to talk about your farm because yeah. my, you know, I don't know if you know this, but my daddy's a farmer. I didn't know and, that. And yeah, he lives in a place called the Funiac Springs, Northwest Florida, which is basically like South Alabama. And oh. um, he has just, you know, slowly sort of built this farm. And so like, at A, do you uh, provide food for like any your community or is it still small? Like, tell me about your farm. Do your kids okay. out there? With Blue Goose. I want to know about your farm. Okay, yeah. so Blue Goose, Blue Goose Farm started because of the pandemic. Okay, um, so it's new, relatively new. We uh, we, bro we broke ground May 25th. Whoa. So, yeah, so we, 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 the day we tilled was May 25th. And we've, um, I don't want to say we're growing the best vegetables in Southern Ontario, but I haven't seen ones that are better. Ah, that's awesome. Um, and, and, and it's been um, uh, such a powerful experience, such a spiritual experience that I never thought ever. Um, it has completely grounded me throughout this pandemic and has, as it, it's like, um, it has given more than just beautiful vegetables. It's, it's given me like complete sanity. It's given me a safe place to go and reflect every day you know, like I literally legitimately like begin and end my days out there um, every day and just watching sunsets kind of getting, get, I get like sunset resets. It's just like, I go out there and watch those sunsets. Uh, you know, the kids, kids are in bed. We put it, we got a, we got a firm schedule so we can like, we got it. It's still tight. They're young enough that we got, we like Trisha's, Trisha's, she's strong. Like we're, we're, <laughs> she, she's, she's, she's on a good sketch. And, yeah. and, and, um, so the, the blue goose, blue goose was named after my grandfather's restaurant. He had a restaurant, um, when he retired from the RCMP, he, he opened a restaurant in Prince Edward Island mm -hmm. and had a restaurant. And then when I have like a tattoo of a blue goose there, hey, look at that. little dahlias was his favorite flower, uh, little blue goose what was your and name? John, John, John Matheson, um, and Big John was a uh, a very kind man and a very like outdoorsy like grew my dad and his, like they grew up and my grandmother they grew up in like um, in Whitehorse so like he was like riding dog sleds around and like wearing polar bear fur and like I'm like the most Canadian <laughs> definitely like the most Canadian family ever actually <laughs> and so it's like I like my family lineage comes from like that like Mounties up in the Northwest territories. And then like, and my, my mom's side comes from, like my mom's side landed in Nova Scotia from Normandy in like 1637. Wow. So it's just like, I'm very, I'm very Canadian. Um, anyway, but so Blue Goose started with an idea. I was shooting this cookbook. So I was shooting this cookbook and Keenan uh, McVeigh, my partner at Blue Goose, um, he came down to help me and him and his wife, they moved out of the city, burnt out chef, you know, uh, to kind of try to just switch it up. They moved down to Niagara. They have no connections to it. She works on a beautiful flower farm wow. and, and he didn't know what he was going to do. He was kind of working. There's this really, there's a lot of wineries. So he was kind of doing part-time. He was, he kind of went to front of house mm -hmm. and was, just trying to make money um, um, doing that kind of some country. And, and when we were working on my book, he's like one of my, he's like my favorite chef. He's just like, he's, he's so, he, he is, he's so talented and, and he's young, he's only 30. And, um, and we just were like, started really talking about like the responsibilities of owning land and farming and, and we just kept on making fun of how much grass I had. And I'm just like, I have like my backyard, my backyard is literally the size of like six football fields. And it's just like, and, and I'm just like, what, do I, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna grow, like I'm growing grass. I'm paying somebody every week to cut my grass, you know? And, and, 
and we just started talking about growing vegetables. And, and he worked, he did a couple stages at different farms um, in North America. And, and I was like, fuck it, let's go, let's do it. Let's do yeah. something. And then, yeah. and, and then we canceled it right away because it, the second the pandemic hit, I was just like, well, I can't financially take this risk right now. Right. Then it switched to, I can't take this financial risk to, I need to do this period. Yeah. And, and I don't know if it's ever going to make money. I don't know if I'm ever going to like recoup fucking anything, but all I know is that we are going to grow vegetables and we're going to feed people and that's what we're going to do. And, and I'm just like, that's it. And so we, we kind of like, I had our, our business plan obviously is no business plan. And, um, (laughs) we're just trying to grow the best vegetables that we can. That's it. And, um, you know, we're, we're trying to be like, none of this like certified organic bullshit, but just like, we're trying to grow vegetables the way, like very low impact. We're composting everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're, we're building out a lot of systems. We're going to be starting to like make our own like teas and stuff for, for, for the beds and stuff. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're learning. We're and and now we're going to quadruple, um, next, next year. We just, we just read, we just dug out the new plot. So it's going to, we're going to be at like 15,000 square feet wow. of vegetables. Holy and, um, yeah. And so this year it was amazing. We teamed up with three different restaurants, three different, sorry, this keeps on beeping these emails. Um, <laughs> but we teamed, we teamed up with three different restaurants in Toronto, um, that we trust. To that 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 won't like fuck up our veg, mm-hmm. um, and and it's just like completely changed the whole way I'm thinking about food, um, and and just like and I'm trying to figure out now is I don't want the farm to be like profitable. I just want it to be something that can provide, and so I'm trying to find that middle ground of of um, can I can can I can Keenan make a living mm-hmm. can can we provide to some restaurants? And then on top of that, can we donate? So we're trying to figure out like once a week, like whenever we do, we bring, we bring the, the, all the produce to the city. Um, you know, there's a lot of community fridges going on right now. And, and we're just like filling up. We bring, we bring like one big cooler um, just for, for community fridges. And we just kind of divide it up. And, yeah. you know, we don't, like we're not trying to post about it or any of that kind of bullshit, but it's just like, we're, all we're trying to do is like get some vegetables to some people. And um, if anybody is watching is, is if anybody's into regenerative agriculture, I, I highly suggest to like do something, grow something and check out. Um, I want to really shout out like uh, sky high farms in Hudson Valley who they, my da- buddy, Dan Colin, he legitimately donates a hundred percent of, of, produce and livestock. Um, and on his website, it's so sick. It has the weight of produce and it's all inner city, um, communities that, um, it's donated to food banks and all that kind of stuff. And it, I'm like, that's the most inspiring thing. I was just like, that's the thing that gets me so stoked on everything right now where I'm just like, I can make my money on YouTube or whatever the fuck this stuff is and write books, but it's just like, how do I flip it and take that money and, and, put it into the soil and put it into like, um, you know, even just like Keenan changing it, doing something that he's like thought he really enjoyed. And, and now he's happy and I'm happy. Yeah. And I'm just like that, that's what the fuck is going on. I mean, so. you know, it's, it's funny, you know, we'll, we'll pivot in a second, but that's exactly what my daddy's doing too. Like he's this super conservative, very Southern Republican guy living in the South. Yeah. And- grows tons of potatoes and tons of carrots and tons of radishes and three or four times a week he just drives down to the community and basically gives it not basically absolutely gives it all away doesn't make a cent out of it this is what he does in his you know he's retired he's in his late 60s now and he just wants Mm -hmm. the rest of his life to be cultivating land and feeding people and you know it's a it's a real incredible when you start to dig deep into sort of that culture of humanity it starts to give you hope in a time when it's hard to find you know but that that's the thing it's like how do we do the real thing how do we how how do we how do we do the real thing and um 
and even in like, um, you know, restaurants are decimated. Our entire industry is like literally burned to the ground. And, and how can we, how can we rebuild? And I'm just like, I don't know. The, the easiest thing was to like plant seeds, like yeah. legitimately. Yeah. I think so much of it's going to have to be going all the way back. To, like back to all the way back starting, back starting back to the very beginning of of basic food production so yeah i could talk about it all day i want to ask you talk about your book because it's so good okay it's so good um, it's a decent book it's a decent book it's decent no it's a good book maddie it's a good book mm. uh okay so there's a part in your book where you talk about like making book one versus book two and you yeah. have this really beautiful quote and it, I think it spoke to me as someone who not only has cooked for a living, but also who eventually began like teaching workshops to talk about how to bake and how to make pastry and you know how to do all these things. You say, uh, please be patient with cooking. It takes time. Mm. And I think in the day we live in, uh, it, <laughs> like, I think people have somewhere along the lines gotten so intimidated by something is like really basic that I think for us as cooking that it becomes for chefs like a, a sort of wall that we have to penetrate of um, oh. of like how to communicate that recipes aren't necessarily all all the way set in stone you know and for a pastry chef to say that is fucking crazy right like it's crazy <laughs> for pastry to say that but even in pastry, it's true. Like it's true that you can find yourself and your intuition in, in a recipe. And that recipes are actually just conversations between two cooks. And mm. when you take a recipe from a other cook, uh, I think my favorite recipes are in conversation form and in ways of like talking about what, well, what do you have on hand? Then use that or what, it, what da, 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 da. so you really, it sounds like you really, and by the look of the recipes, it like looks like you made a real attempt to make these way more accessible than the first book that you made. Um, and I just wonder, like, I, I can see all the ways in which your life has sort of changed the arc of your life and why all of that might be true. And you wanted to find that accessibility, but I think like on a real technical level, like what was that like in a kitchen for you to communicate that differently? Like what was the what was the change there between you really wanting to sort of show this great food and also then all of a sudden years later showing like, also you can just make this chicken stock and it's really beautiful. Well, I think it just comes with maturity and experience and um, just understanding my landscape and what really kind of surrounds that and, and just being able to kind of read the room that I'm in yeah. Um, that I kind of built, you know, and I, I think it's like, there's so many different kind of ways. Um, like I'm a firm believer recipes were made to break, you know, much like most rules. So yeah. it's just like, um, and even like, even like with my YouTube series that I made for this book, it was just like every recipe that I'm doing, I'm just like, if you don't have any of this bullshit, then who gives a fuck? And it, and it, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter that you can't get, if you can't get halibut, use haddock. If you can't get haddock, use mackerel even, but it's just like, it doesn't, it's it just a matter of like understanding, like if you use mackerel, maybe add more acid cause it's so fatty or like, but that's, that just is like, I think under trying to just cook, I just truly want people to have building blocks and then they can build their own kind of like you know, stadium and, and build their own little world that they want. And then they can crumble it and rebuild it and learn. And it's just like a lot of the funniest thing about making cookbooks that I didn't really realize is like the amount of people that are like, your recipes suck. They didn't work. I'm like, first of all, make it fucking 10, 15 times. And I guarantee you're going to have a different outcome. And I guarantee if somebody was to give me a blueprint, how to fucking build a chair, the first time I did it, my chair wouldn't look like the fucking chair in the fucking blueprint. So it's just like, I find that people just like expect this weird perfection out of, out of recipes. Recipes are like these, these, these things that are set in stone that like, and there's a lot of people and my partner, Trishy, she's one of them where she'll, she'll get like mad if she can't find an ingredient that's in some magazine that she's like, this recipe looks fire. I want to make this like next week. 
And people that get excited really plan. They'll plan like two weeks ahead. And they're like, I'm going to make this in two weeks. It's going to be the best. I'm going to gather all the ingredients. And it's yeah. like the scavenger hunt. And then they're like, I can't get Szechuan peppercorns or I can't get tarragon or I can't get, uh, you know, a certain type of cut of meat. And, mm -hmm. and it's just like, I think once again, it's just like, I think you need to look at it a little bit deeper and just be like, what is that cut of meat? And what are the principles of that cut of meat? Is it a fatty cut? Is, is it a full attendant? Does yeah. it need to be cooked at a certain, uh, like, you know, uh, amount of time to break down? Is it a quick cook? Is it a long cook? Is, is that, is that tarragon meant for an anise flavor? Do you, do they, people even understand that? And then how are you going to achieve anise through something else? Maybe they have chervil. Maybe they, you can use a star anise. I don't fucking know, yeah. but, it, but it's still just like, I'm always just saying that, like, I just want to spark somebody's imagination and spark somebody's like confidence enough to try. And and I think like that whole messaging is something that I really have fallen into and something that I can get behind. And like, that's my whole thing is like, I want people to laugh. I really want people to laugh when they watch my stuff. I really want people like my recipes aren't amazing. They they're good, but it's not like, I'm not trying to do a master fucking class. I'll tell you that much. I'm trying, I'm trying to like get somebody excited to make a fucking lasagna. So hopefully they fuck. And then Hopefully they, they have a good time and that's, that builds their self-esteem and then yeah. they're going to carry on and get more confident and, and, and maybe cooking could be that thing that makes them feel better about themselves. That's yeah. all I'm trying to do. And, 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 and the, if you don't have the ingredient, it's just like, get another ingredient, please. Yeah. You Figure know? out what else you like to taste. I think, I think so often people take themselves out of the recipe and so often recipes are written to not give you any autonomy. And I think it's just really, it, this is one of the first times I've ever seen someone really succeed in writing recipes in the way that I always want people to have conversations about recipes where it's, there's enough lucid, like enough loose sort of permission to, to move around in those recipes. Like somewhere along the lines, we got real rigid about what cooking was and what recipe needed, you know, and, and it really frustrated me, especially as a picking a, a pastry chef and as a baker. And you even say this in the book, like it's such a science, it's such a science. Well, that's true. And it's a different thing than savory cooking altogether, but there still is, you have to be wholly sort of present in each move that recipe like and you get to engage and I think you know I'm so excited to see people having more conversations that are about accessibility and, mm. and you just really you really nail it the thing I so we have to take questions in a minute but I really yeah. want to actually ask this because um looking through your book I mean do you know right like you know that you are <laughs> maybe you're wholly Canadian but for a Southern cook, for a Southern baker, you mm -hmm. have such a spirit of Southern cook in you. And I don't know, like, if that even makes any sense. Maybe I'm talking to a room full of Canadians. I don't know. But like, yeah. uh, like, like I, I, when I read your book, there is, and it goes kind of back to the conversation about recipe writing. Like there's such a, a generosity of your spirit. And there's also such a like, um, familial feeling to getting to know your recipes and getting to know you through the recipes. It feels distinctly Southern to me. And then you go and put like a fried fish sandwich and a bunch of really proper cornbread, by the way, mm. proper cornbread, that cornbread you have in here is proper. And the fact that you put things in, in like a cast iron skillet, uh, like uh, there are so many uh, notes in this book that make me wonder how you've not, or maybe if you have, and this is the question, like, have you spent time cooking in the South? Do you cook with a lot of Southern chefs? Like, what is the, what is the pulse I'm getting? Like, I feel like you may as well be cooking in Mobile, Alabama. In, a, in the yeah. like, best possible way, like, you're, the way you communicate food feels really familiar to me. And like well, it's very kind. Um, <laughs> I think it's, um, it comes from my family. Yeah. And I think it's just like, I, my, I come from a house, we didn't lock our doors. Wow. Um, 
and we we had a, uh, an open door policy. I, I got two brothers. We're all two years apart, and we always had like people over, and there was always enough food for everybody. And every Sunday there was always food for everybody, and it was just one of those things where. Uh, and I'll tell you one thing: we didn't have a lot of money. I come from like my mom was a, a working. Like she worked at a factory. My, my dad was an engineer that worked at a factory. Um, and, but we always had food was our, like our, our, our joys, right? Like that was, those were our wins, which our wins was sharing food. Yeah. Um, and I think having, um, you know, that maritime hospitality is, I find like the maritimes is very, um, very close mannerisms and um kind of flavors of the south mm -hmm. and and i think um a i love the south <laughs> but it, it's just it's like there is no soul food in my country right it doesn't exist um so there's like there's some diners there is some stuff but there's no there's not soul food you know we're, we're north of the border it didn't make its way really up here yeah. Um, and, and so over the years and I'm French, like, I only worked at literally, I only worked in French restaurants. So it's just like, um, you know, I've always had the love of some butter and some, some puff pastries, but it's still just, um, the thing it's, it's just, it's in me, it's in my DNA. It's, it, it is, I think it's either you got it or you don't. Yeah. And, and some people, um, uh, the way they cook, sometimes it, it's perfect and it, and it looks perfect and you eat it and it's just like, huh, that's missing something. <laughs> and that something is the person's soul, <laughs> you know? And, and I've been in a lot of really good restaurants that are, um, you know, really good restaurants. And I'm like, it's missing it. You ain't got it. All your fucking fancy stuff. You still ain't got it. And, yeah. and they're missing it. They're missing it. Uh, yeah. And and, and which is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people aren't looking for it either. That, 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 that real, that real kind of real loving. Yeah. And, and I think, I think my recipes, I don't know nothing like it, it, it really is a funny thing. Cause even like with this book, I wrote, um, it backwards. So I wrote my, my first, like the first entry essay to kind of get my mind of like what it really is. And I write it on my phone right so i don't i don't type anything out on a laptop or anything so it's just like i write it all on my phone crazy to me it's so crazy to me that you do this all on your phone to continue Most, <laughs> hey man it is what it is it's just like it's how i work and and it, it's like the process the the thing that's amazing is like so i write out my outline yeah. then i write out my recipes then i let those recipes tell me how i feel and then i write my head notes then once I have all my head notes, those head notes will tell me how that essay will be at the beginning of that chapter. Mm -hmm. And I really, because this is like, I'm not really telling a story in this book. The food is telling a story to me, I think. And, and I think like I needed to like kind of release it a little bit through like, just like my ideas of like what I think these dishes are. And then once the recipe was written and, and then once the photo, I didn't even write the head notes until after I shot the the food and uh -huh. and then i so I, I i just got the recipes done and then i was like once the recipes are done i'm gonna shoot all the food and let the food just tell me how i feel about it because i'm like i still don't know because i'm like i'm just writing rant like i am just writing recipes these aren't family recipes yeah. uh, some are but it's like it is just it is it's a it's a home style cookbook do i make every single one of these dishes at my house no a lot of them have some real stories a lot of them are kind of nonsensical and i just think that they work yeah and they make sense and yeah. it is like uh, they we call it in the back of the book i have a section called the conjuring because it's just like like i would be there in the moment and be like uh no this is not working and we're gonna switch lanes and we're gonna do it this way and it, I'm just like, once again, I'm the same, I'm the person that's constantly breaking my own rules and yeah. just being like, yo, fuck that shit. Cause I'm like, I'm the one in control. Like I'm the person doing it. So it's, I'm just like, that doesn't work. Fuck that dish. Let's yeah. do another dish real quick. And it's even like that squash, the, the Thanksgiving squash, where I like stuffed the whole turkey or the, I stuffed all the, 
stuffing into the butternut squash and made like thick, like real good gravy. But it's just like, you know, that came from a mistake while we were doing, while we were shooting just the photos. And then I, and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And then I'm just gonna, here's, I'm using my, my, you know, my mother-in-law's or kind of my mother-in-law's and, and Trisha's uh, stuffing recipe. And then I'm just like, I'm so sick of all this tofurkey and all this like mock meat stuff. So I was just like, I'm going to just stuff a, a butternut squash. And then that book comes out my buddy. He's like, dude, that's like the perfect, just side. It, it could be a main course. It could be a side. And he's just like, that's just a fire way of making stuffing in a butternut squash. So it's just like, yeah, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but yeah. <laughs> well, your accessibility, I think is really important. I think I'm pretty much a Southern man. Yeah. I mean, it felt really familiar to me and I don't see that very often, except for with like, you know, there's a real network of Southern cooks and chefs that are really close together. You know, we all have pretty, pretty tight, pretty tight relationships down in the South. And I got felt like I was like, I think that's the kinship I've always felt with you. Is there something really familiar about your generosity of like spirit? And like, you have a really good, you have a really good heart, Maddie. You know that you have a really good heart. <laughs> it's nice to hear. The uh, I'm still just a sociopath, but it, it. But also, I think I think most cookbooks are written by chefs that don't know who the fuck they are either. They, right. They've they've they like most people in our industry. They don't know who the fuck they are. I'll say no. that out loud. They're like twisted up, and they've built up this thing that they think they are, but that's not who they are. And that's I think what's so refreshing is like there's no pretension to this you're not trying to sort of force a, 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 an ego onto anybody and that's where I get turned off with food and I think it's just it's time and I think the world's ready for like good true simple honest shit coming their way um we have to take questions let's do let's do questions so there's a couple here well there's plenty. yeah um, there's one that I want to like riff on a little bit like we haven't talked about and I don't think you really, maybe I missed it but I don't think you really talk about it so much in the book uh, maybe you talk about it in your first book which I'm an asshole and I haven't read it's okay um, I haven't read your book yet I'm gonna though I got it <laughs> but um, like talk about mentorship like just maybe give a shout out you know mentorship about- okay yeah. he- here you go Mentorship. I ain't got none. I just got my friends. My friends lift me up. I, I don't have a fucking one singular chef. Uh, I worked in stupid French restaurants and I don't respect any of the head chefs I ever worked for, really. Tell you yeah. the truth. Fuck them. So it doesn't really, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, look up, I look up to even the people around me. I, I look up, like um, my mentorship is the fear of not being me. That's my mentor. And it's just like, I really just, um, I don't know. I, 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 it's one of those funny things. I, I opened my first restaurant when I was 26. Um, you know, my mentor is failure. My mentor is, is closing every single restaurant I've ever opened. Um, that's a fact. Everyone's like, always like, like people don't really realize like, um, I've closed every single restaurant I have ever opened. And, and it's just like, and I'm like, and it's great. And it's just like, it's okay. Um, it, it, it really like odd fellows closed parts and labor closed P and L burger closed P and L catering closed. Those were mine. Those were my babies and gonzo. And, um, you know, it's the people around me that, that, that don't give up. It's the people around me that like, um, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's my friends. My friends are my mentors. Not like, there isn't like this one chef. There isn't this one um, person. It's like every year it's like, maybe I, I latch onto one person a little more and I learn, I listen. And, and I'm just like, yeah, that makes me want to be better. That makes me want to be better. I'm like drinking that. That's a good cup of tea. I like what that person is doing. That's really cool. That's really level. That's really like respectable. And like, that makes me want to move forward in that kind of way. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and uh, that's kind of it. Like mentorship is just like, a, like a lot of people ask me, like, I, I even like all anytime, like I've had so many chefs hit me up and, and be like, Hey, can I get a coffee with you? 
I'm like, yeah, man, let's go get a coffee. What do you want to know? I'll tell you all the secrets. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you all the secrets of whatever the fuck I did. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I hopefully, I don't know if it's going to work out for you. I don't know, man. But it's just like one of those things where it's just like, I don't think it's like this big kind of, it's, it, 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 it's such a collective, yeah. my mentorship. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's just natural inspiration from, from, from the existence of humans. I, I really try to find those sparkling, you know, when you look into the water and the water hits it nice and it's just sparkling, like that's, those are the people out there. And I'm always just looking for those sparkles, you know? I think that's, uh, I'm going to steal that for my future answers. Cause I feel the same way. Like if anything holds me up in this world, it's the people around me that like, are doing things in real time alongside me. And like, it yeah. also kind of speaks to sort of this weird territory of like, when you start to find more success, you also start to face, and this is not, I'm gonna say it anyway, cause it's coming out, but like not worth addressing, but like re seeing people who sort of have a weird, per like uh, reflex to professional jealousy and like not knowing what that is, like kind of being really shocked because you're like, I think there are certain people who really are genuinely looking for the people who are succeeding so that you can see those ripples and find that light and just sort of follow their lead and like really find the spaces where you're allowed to do the things that you want to do. I think that's a really beautiful answer. There are two, okay, there are two kids. I just want to read what they're saying because they're awesome kids. There's a girl saying, hi, this is Nellie. I'm six years old. Um, what is your kid's favorite food that you or Trish make? I just want to give that to the six. Hi, Nellie. <laughs> um, great question. Um, I would say kanji is um, my kid's favorite. Uh, Mac, Mac's favorite food probably is kanji. I think he just likes salt and chicken stock and the consistency, to be awesome. honest. <laughs> but um i think honestly like it's just um yeah he likes he likes um kanji and rizzo will eat she's at the age like she's almost two so then she'll she'll kind of eat anything right now she's kind of like she loves and the thing that's amazing is she loves meat like she'll just be like meat 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 and she just wants meat and like she'll like like if i bring home ribs from the meat and three or something like that. Like she's always like, she'll smoke. Like she's like literally what, 25 pounds and she'll like do a half rack of ribs. Like it's crazy. Yes. I feel like I need to be best friends with all the women. In the family. Uh, and then there's one from Harper, eight years old. And she said she's from DC and she wants to tell Maddie black lives matter. And thanks for being awesome. So I wanted to hey. read from the littles. We got littles watching. Thank uh, you so much. Black lives do matter. Yeah. Vote. Grow up and vote. And vote, Harper. Um, okay, there's one question that's sort of about the future. Um, mm. uh, this one specifically asks about travel shows, but I kind of also want to ask about, it sounds to me like you're pretty tied to, into your farm, um, but this is, will be a good place because we're close to our end to sort of wrap things up. Um, this guy wants to know, I'm sorry I didn't say your name. I didn't see it anymore. Um, if there are any shows specifically in the pipeline, but I think I also wanted to ask the question too. I know you don't currently own any restaurants, but like, I wonder, you know, both of us have spent a lot of time. You've owned several and I've worked in several and, um, you know, we both came up kind of in the same time, right. Of like yeah. the restaurant industries, um, you know, life, <laughs> lifespan, life cycle. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I wonder, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about maybe your hope for the restaurant industry and the food industry in general. Loaded question. Um, <laughs> well, I'm opening three restaurants right now. Um, so I'm opening three restaurants right now, uh, maybe four, to be honest. Um, and I won't let uh, I can't let the government stop me from doing stuff but I want to be I want to play within the walls of, of what we've built here and and the safety um and I want to I just I want to serve food like I have I think that the the there's going to be like a lot of QSRs 
And I, there's going to be a lot of quick, those are quick service restaurants. And there's going to be a lot of, maybe you can say just fast food. I don't know what the fuck you want to call it, but there's going to be a lot of that. And then there's going to be a lot of super high end. And because unfortunately rich people still like eating the way that rich people like eating. And, and then the middle ground of places that like, you know, the, the beauty, the beauty's lost, I think, which is the saddest thing. Um, going to your favorite cafe, drinking wine, eating oysters, it's lost, unfortunately, maybe, um, for right now. I think um, it's a nice time to rebuild kind of some systems in which uh, we treat staff. Um, I think there's a lot of um, lifting some fucking veils and really seeing how ugly a lot of um, our forefathers and mostly forefathers have, have created this, this, this society that we live in, 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 in uh, our industry and kind of these rules that we've had, that we've learned, that we've upheld. And um, I think right now there's not a better time to kind of rewrite um, what hospitality is and rewrite what chefs are. Like, I don't give a fuck about chefs. I'll tell you that much. Um, I don't give a fuck if anybody ever calls me a chef ever again. I'm going to open up restaurants. I want to open up restaurants. Um, I, I don't care if you, I'm personally called or referenced as a chef, or you can call me a YouTube person. Um, I don't really care what you call me. I'm happy with what I'm doing. Um, but I think, um, you know, I want to, like, the thing about it too is like, I want to try to help people open restaurants as well. And I'm doing that. So guess what I'm really good at is using who I am and connecting dots. Guess what? I know people with money. I know people, I know chefs, really good chefs that can cook really fucking good and that want to be chefs. And I can, I can allow um, myself to, to, to genuinely help a couple. And, and so I'm trying to figure out how to do that kind of shit and partner with people and just be like, let's open up something. I know how to do things a little bit differently. I get a lot of attention and how can I get that into people's hands that can like make them a living. So I'm, I'm working on a couple projects that are pretty interesting that way. Um, and I'm working um, on trying to rewrite what our culture is. We get to rewrite, um, you know, working with um, my, my team is like how, what is it? What it, it, it's, it's just like, what is it? What is it all? Let's have some fun. Let's, and, 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 and try to, to do this, not in like this, like hokey have fun way. Let, 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 like, I don't need, I don't want to be like, let's go to this winery and get blackout drunk. That's not the fun. That's not the fun. It, 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 it's how do we take care of each other is the fun and, 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 and figure out a, a system like, I don't know if tipping's good. I don't know if it's bad. I, I'm, I'm I, you know, like, it, it's just like, what makes sense for the people that are involved in this restaurant and, and these restaurants. And like, I want to try to figure this out with like, I, like, I'm like, I, I'm just like, I don't know. So I'm trying to like, be like, what do you guys think? And like, let's, let's fully talk about it and, and, and do it. And uh, once again, I'm like, I'm not some massive, like, you know, I don't have some crazy big office filled with a ton of employees and stuff. Like I'm still, I like to keep things scrappy and small. And, and it's just like, I'm trying to do a lot of different things. And I'm just like, I just want to empower people and do it that way. And, and in the same way, it's just like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. The restaurant industry is just fucked. And the, but the thing that sucks, the thing that sucks, I didn't ask the fucking government. I'm like, one. Of the, I don't know. I didn't ask the fucking government to open my fucking restaurants and I ain't going to ask them for jack shit. So it's just like, I, I, I honestly, I'm like, we're, we're, we're waiting around for the fucking, for like God to reveal himself somehow to help us. And it's just like, I don't know. Is it, it can't we just go sell sandwiches, but we can't do that. So it's just like, I, 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 I honestly, I don't even have any answers. I, I don't have any answers. And all I'm going to try to do is put my best foot forward and, 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 and try to walk together with with my my partners and my staff and and try to like literally like do it unified with with the the people that make these businesses exist 
Well, and that's the beauty of this moment is we get to rewrite the way it goes. So I'm glad Literally. you're- Literally. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you're out there cultivating and rewriting, Maddie. I'm glad to know you and I'm glad to get to talk. Okay. You're sweet, you're <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you both so much. I I could listen to you all talk for like ever and ever. Um, so thank you so much for, for this conversation. Um, and I encourage everybody again um, to check out Homestyle Cookery. It's available from Politics and Prose at the link in the chat. Um, I do have one question as we wrap up um, for both Maddie and Lisa. Are y'all reading anything right now that you're um, interested in, in sharing with the, with the crowd? Maddie, what are you reading? I'll tell you what I'm reading. Oh my God, you just pulled out a book. Stone. And I know it's not a book, but it's also a mag? one of the best magazines being made in North America right now as we speak. And this is our newest issue. And if, are, do you guys carry this at Politics and Prose? I can check. Yeah. Check. Uh, uh, an amazing, amazingly incredible uh I mean, just look at the images in this book. It's just, I think, one of the most stunning and one of the most beautifully written books. Um, and it's been published for about, a, I think, now close to two years. Um, and it's got some of the best writing and some of the best documentation about cultural foodways. And uh, it's, it's really all I, all I sit down to actually read anymore <laughs> these days, even my back issues. That's awesome. Um, I'm just looking at my, uh, I read everything on my phone. I'm, I'm, a, I literally do. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, I'm like, well, right now. Um, the courage to be disliked, mm. you know, so I'm That's reading bad. that. Um, uh, what else was the last kind of thing? Welcome to paradise. Now go to hell, which is about the, this like surfing thing about the North shore um what was the last one? Oh, i finally started <laughs> i started reading that subtle art of not giving a fuck but it, 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 it's just, i just like this whole book is just like how i'm like kind of living my life since day one so i just kind of stopped reading it i was like i don't need this book is like not yeah. for me <laughs> But I wanted to see. I was just like, how is this book? It's been on the New York Times bestseller list for 300 weeks or some shit. <laughs> I need to read The uh, Art of Not, what's it called? Not Being Liked? I need to read that. Yeah. The Courage to be Disliked. Yeah, I need to read that. The awesome. Of- yeah, it's just, I don't know. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like get into like some fucking Rob Doss shit or like just trying to like mellow. I'm trying to like mellow my shit. My brain, like, I'm, I'm a broken sociopath. So it's just like, I'm trying to like, really like, I'm trying to like mellow and, um, you know, totally. I'm trying to mellow. All right. Well, a lot of chaos out there. <laughs> totally. Thank you both again so much. This was such a lovely evening and lovely conversation. Um, and thanks everybody in the audience again. Um, you know, Politics and Prose is an independent bookstore and every one of your purchases is like very personally appreciated and felt by all of our staff. Um, uh, so thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for supporting us. Stay well and stay well read, y'all. Bye. Thank you so much. Night. Bye, y'all. <laughs>